Hey guys, uh, gonna make a video on CXAI. I long this. Uh, this had a lot of great bullish factors going for it. Uh, and we'll talk about this video, we'll talk about kind of, you know, what bullish factors can really shape your thinking, especially in low float land, and also about sector strength, right? So today was a day that AI just had a bid all over the place, and it was really building up. If you've been paying attention for the past couple weeks, uh, you know, the biggest move was SOUN, right? SOUN was a part of the original AI basket along with BBAI, CXAI, and those type of plays. Uh, and it's been on a great multi-day run, has been squeezing, building liquidity. Um, AI as a theme in the market is not going to completely go away. Um, we see what's happening with NVIDIA. We see what's happening. We saw what happened with AI, even though, you know, AI, the ticker AI is is falling into that, you know, former leader category. You know, it's, um, I'm not saying it can't make big moves, but, uh, you know, it'd be, it could be, you know, it kind of risks how Tesla is right now, where, you know, it's a former market leader and now there's other things that money's flown into. Um, but CXAI, you know, today was a day, this was so great as a long for so many reasons, right? Uh, you know, longing in low floats is, is very counterintuitive, right? It's, you know, retail is, is, is drawn to the wrong stocks when longing um, the vast majority of the time, right? Retail when they're looking along is they're looking at the top gappers. What's the top? Because obviously if a thing's gapping up 80, 100%, 200%, must mean it's good long. Um, you know, if we're in a crazy market like early February was, or December last year was, you know, where things are making crazy. If the market's showing you that crazy, insane moves are happening, like 200% gaps followed by another 100, 200% squeeze, yeah, sure, you could kind of trade anywhere right when the market is at its absolute strongest it's going to be the best time to chase things that are gapped up and that type of thing but when the market cools down and that type of like crazy euphoria kind of pulls back which we've seen this month you know a common theme theme i've been talking about on youtube videos is you know longs and low floats often need a reason to go a reason to push right and that reason is not you know, news catalyst, right? This is how a lot of most people think. Stocks move because some type of p news cat, you know, some type of catalyst dropped that's pushing up the stock. You know, that's true in legitimate companies, right? That's tr that's true in like you know, like for example, good news biotechs from like high IO companies that are like legitimate, you know, have like legitimate drugs in production, and and um, you know, those can make moves based off legitimate catalysts and of course mid cap and large cap stocks make moves off legitimate catalysts but in low float land you know it, it's it's flipped upside down where that type of thinking is abused right they they try to make you know a lot of these tiny float stocks try to uh, make it seem like their pr is significant and meaningful um and in reality it's it's you know it's gonna gap up in the pre-market because that's when they drop the pr and a lot of times they they, they fade uh, especially when the market gets weaker, right? But CXCI is a little different here. You know, it's it's it has so many great things going for it. The first thing that I had going for it was it barely gapped up in the pre-market, right? It closed in the 1.6s and it pretty much opened in the 1.7s, right? So you're, you're talking about a stock that when the volume starts to come into the play, it's not, you know, it was up like 25% here, right? So... You know, it's not high gapping percentage equals strong. It's low gapping percentage is potentially strong because it has room, you know, as it has support levels on the daily. You know, Mikey Underdog talks about support levels on the daily a lot. Um, it has space to fill to the upside. A lot of times the order book isn't super heavy to the upside until it starts pushing a bit and then it starts to hit resistance. So you know, low gapping percentage is always, um, is always great. You know, a lot of times, you know, a lot of my market open longs, of course, this wasn't, this didn't really fit my market open long strategy because it didn't even appear on my scanner until this push and this pullback. It's somebody in my Discord. Um, it's a, 
uh, I don't want to mispronounce your name, but it's a uh, Leandri, a great, mostly long trader in my Discord, uh, pointed the stock out. And I did see it on my scanner, but it was a little bit far down. I'm glad. Um, I, I believe it's a woman. She pointed it out. And I was like, oh, great. Like, oh, this is really interesting because, you know, a lot of longs, first thing you always look at is volume. You need to have volume always, always. You know, if this candle was like, if this initial push right here at like 950 was like 200K, I would have been like, ah, eh, like with the exact, I'm talking with the exact same type of candlestick pattern. 200K, would, I wouldn't have been that excited, right? You're kind of hoping a bunch of... I think about longs that might look candlestick-wise, but are only trading, you know, 100,000, 200,000 shares, is you're kind of hoping volume, more volume comes into the play. And sometimes when those, you know, sometimes that does happen. Sometimes a stock trading 100K turns into 500K or 1 million. Those can have crazy squeezes, right? Especially if you get in really early, but there's a lot of risk associated with that is that oftentimes the volume doesn't come in. Um, and the odds of a long pattern working decrease, right? So I thought it was good volume. I then agree with one of my favorite patterns that I made a whole YouTube video on called uh, when stocks pull back to the 1 minute 20 EMA, when they do these quick dump moves, these quick dump moves where it's like they just go straight up and quick dump to the 1 minute 20, they consolidate, and they go back, you know, just like this. <laughs> this is literally the pattern. Uh, it can also happen on a 1 minute 50. We actually saw the 1 minute 50 work on AULT in, in the pre-market this morning. Um, another trade, Mikey Underdog hit. I was too, oh, too, I was too afraid to hit it. At, uh, this would be at 8.30 a.m. on AULT. You want to go look up that chart for the same type of pattern, just with a different MA. Um and of course, you love to see the bid stacks, right? You like to see the empty order book to the upside, and you like to see the volume, right? So, um, you know, this worked out very well. And a big thing was I on my scans, I saw all these AI names, you know, because I've been trading, you know, long enough. You know, AI is not even that old of a sector, but I remember all those all those tickers, right? I saw BBAI, I saw SOUN. You know, I saw GFA. There's, those were all on the scans. G, GTA. I, there's a bunch of tickers on the scans. Um, and CXI was the best because it, it was trading nice volume. This was like 750k, um, and it wasn't gapped up that much. And it did a common little, you know, manipulation pattern where they do these quick dumps to lure people in and they squeeze, right? And then the book kind of confirms all that. So I did sell in the highs. I sold on a candle that I in a Earlier in my career, I probably would have tried sh insta shorting on. Um, but yeah, look at these, look at these quick dumps, quick dump, high day clear out short trap. I saw this, you know, they painted 2.5, right? They swiped 2.5, 10% pullback. What do they do? They throw up a bunch of bids on the book. And I told my Discord, I was like, I'm just gonna hold through this. If these bids hold, it's probably just going to, you know, then the sector, in my mind, that really confirmed that the sector was really strong when these bids held right here and then squeezed straight up. And then Mikey Underdog had a key level of 2.9 on the daily. It rejected that level. It pulled back and I got out and that was the whole trade. I just told my uh, Discord, I was like, I really wasn't looking to short this at all. Um, you know, I told him, it's like, if you're going to short stuff like this, you have to be really good at like maybe guessing these high day clear outs. Um, I don't, I personally don't like, you know, guessing because you don't, I try, you don't want to be chasing down here because of, like, <laughs> this squeeze happens because of all these lower high chasers, like super far, you know, lower high chasing super far away from high day is generally not the play. Um, cause these types of moves can happen on you. So, uh, you know, I told him, it's like, if you go to short this, maybe you had a big brain read and you shorted this high day clear out. And even then. You know, you still have to follow risk management. I would still recommend taking profits, you know, up 10, 15 percent uh, on these strong ones. And I was like, you know, maybe the maybe there'll be a better trade in the afternoon. And I, you know, I just didn't really see anything. I just they started throwing like 80,000 share bids over here. I should have just relonged it, if anything. Um, and then, yeah, I just uh, didn't trade the rest of the day. So we'll go over uh, we'll go over the book and stuff like that. All right, here's here's the AULT quick dump. These quick dumps to the one minute fifty, also. But we're gonna talk about the one minute twenty here. Again, you can see it. 
push. The green line is the one minute 20 because it's the one minute chart. 20 exponential moving average. That's a green line. Um, I, I love it when it, t when it, it you know, uh, uh, some people in my, in my Discord will try to long it the moment it touches the 20 AMA, say on like this candle, but personally, I like to wait closer to five minutes, right? Like four or five minutes. That's why I was longing these candles because I thought that was an adequate amount of time to get a book on the, uh, a read on the book and see what the structure was like, see if the bits were holding and, you know, and long, try to long into a possible rotation. And yeah, I longed it, and this is just pure Momo. You can see increasing volume, new highs, increasing volume, new highs. This is these are bullish. It's bullish. Um, and then you know, here's a little long trappy push that started to reject. I sold some. Should have just big brain another quick dump. This time to VWAP. Man, high day clout short trap. And squeeze, you know, at this point, I mean, this, by the way, this again, this closed at 1.6, guys. Up here, we're in the 2.3s. It's really not up that it's it's trading nice, consistent, increasing volume, and it's not up that much. It's, you know, this is how this is really how Momo moves. This is exactly and with room to run, right? That's the best. So let's go over some book stuff. Um, just of the morning, so we can already see here. You can already see my long, right? You can already see the bids. Here's the big 750k candle. Here's the instant pullback. And we get a nice little five minutes of, it. some guy came in, it touches the one minute 20. Some guy just throws up 80,000 shares on the bid. He just throws up 80,000 shares, uh, which in this, you know, sometimes big bids are bearish, right? That's true. That's in low floats. There's a lot of games that are played. Sometimes a big ask is super bull is super bullish, and sometimes a big bid is super bearish, right? Sometimes, you know, a hundred k bid comes in. People see the bid on the tape, see it on the level two. You know, a, a bunch of buying initially comes in. Maybe it stalls, you know, after you know a couple percent push. And maybe they pull the bid, or maybe they just get sold right into it. And you know, there's a lot of games that get played. Doesn't always mean you know big bid is is bullish, but in this context, um, given how it fits with the pattern, given the volume, given how it's only up 20% at this point, given the quick dump to the one minute 20, given you know the uh, relatively thin order book to the upside, it was great. It was great. A long tier and a long tier. You know, I got a long I logged in this area. And then um and then yeah, I just started pushing. I just sold a little bit in a high day because I just <laughs> you know, you never really know how strong a, you know, especially because there wasn't a whole lot of bid follow up on this. But I was bullish the sector. You know, I sold a bunch at, you know, in a two point it was like what, two point two or two point one eight and some more at two point four or whatever. And I actually said on my Discord, I'm like, man, this might be one of those plays where it goes up 80% from my, I literally said 80% from my entry and I sold way too much, way too early. And it went up to 3.45, which was 81% from my entry. Uh, sadly, I, I sold most of it, um, you know, when it started showing some weakness up here, right? Without, not, it's one of those plays where it's like, the sector strength and the volume was really carrying it. There wasn't really a whole lot of bids. You know, the bids came on the deeper pullbacks. The, t the deeper pullbacks is when the bidders really started to show up. But, you know, there was just a lot of slapping going on. Like, here's that, like, this is the Heidi Claire. Look, they, they, had, they had a big, like, 100K ask here. They filled the 100K ask. They pulled, this is the Heidi clear out. They pulled it. Look at the bid stacks. Look at the empty order. The Heidi clear out short trap. Exactly what it is. Um, and I just wrote it up to uh, the daily level that Mikey said he was, you know, he told me the daily level he was looking at. It was rejecting it. Um, and uh, yeah, I just sold the rest there and I didn't, I stopped trading it, but it ended up going on these massive, like you could see, what like, you could see these bids getting stacked away. You get these walk downs. These walk downs are, so, you always have to remember on these, so I'll go to the chart. On these midday walkdowns, a lot of times, both like look at both of these. Look at this one. 
you look at this one. Both of these times, it was nothing but lower high, lower high. This is like 30 minutes of selling. 30 minutes of selling. So big, you know, relatively up only move. 30 minutes of straight selling with no like long trap, no liquidity pattern, no levels being swiped. These are the types on, on momentum plays, walk downs. You know, I call this a walk down. They can be so strong because it's it's nothing but shorts loading in and getting rewarded and longs who might be trying to, you know, dip by, you know, possibly getting stopped out, right? And, you know, those these are always it's the same thing here. Like this is this is a lower high, lower high, another lower high. This didn't swipe us at all. You know, it's a little different story. Let, let's say this wasn't sector strength stuff, right? It's a different story if maybe you had this lower high and then you had a big, crazy, aggressive, let's say you had green candle, green candle, like two or three straight green candles up to here, maybe this 3.2 level, and then a pull. Like, that's different, right? You know, aggressive moves that swipe lower highs um, in a few candles can be great. But this is just very grindy, though. This is like, I know this move seems really aggressive, but look how grindy this is. This is like, the one minute candles on these are actually like not very huge. Um, it's a relatively grindy, consistent volume stock. A little dangerous to play. Um, but yeah, these, these lower highs. Wait, you know what? You can see the little bid props here. A nice little higher low bid prop. It gets knifed. And then, you know, I actually thought right here... We could see we had like this push that failed. And I thought maybe we get like a little support swipe, maybe down the VWAP and then something, maybe it goes down, maybe it goes up. And then what was really interesting, like, oh, maybe it, maybe it, it's coming down. You can see this high, you know, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, potentially bullish. It got to this candle right here and it threw up an 80,000 share bid and just shoved this. And then what's interesting is that bid, like showing the book, but it actually got filled like here. There was a bidder at 2.8, and then he moved up to 2.9. He was 80,000 shares. He got completely filled. The stock didn't. It went down like maybe two cents, and then it squeezed straight up, just straight up. I should have just went long on it. Honestly, when I saw that bid get filled with no follow through, I should have just thought, hey, some dude just bought a bunch of shares, and it's not. <laughs> his stock's not going down. Um, maybe I should I should buy with him. That type of thing. Uh, but I didn't do it. But yeah, sector strength, guys. It's one of the best reasons. It is one of the strongest. It is one of, in terms of like reasons why a low float might push, it is one of the best reasons. Sector strength is, is no joke. And, and a lot of times with sector strength, the earlier you get in on the strength, the better. Like maybe some of these AI moves start going on. I mean, look at us, you one. It's already on a multi day run and it's holding up. You know, it, 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 this is also one of those trades where, you know, you know, my, my room asked me, it's like, what do you think about this this ticker, right? Because a lot of people in my room are short sellers. So, you know, a lot of them are asking from a short perspective. Like, you know, they zoom out. They see the run from 2 to 8, 300% move, up only. There are, there's a lot of bearish factors on this, you know. Um, and I will say this is interesting lower high paint. See so all these, like, lower highs. Then they come to, they aggressively swipe it. It is an interesting short, but I just want, I just don't want to step in front of the sector strength, guys. I just don't want to step in front of it. And, and also a play like SOUN, um, where you have this like strong multi day runner on the daily, just kind of pushing. You have to understand that this type of play is, it's not an intraday, you know, short that you're, going to make 20 30 40 percent on it's not like a day one low flow pop this type of short is absolutely like a swing so it's like a mean reversion short on the daily which means you're probably going to have to swing it right because um you know i'm not surprised it's holding up right here now that doesn't mean it can't just gap down in the in the after hours or gap down in the pre-market or have a red day tomorrow um you know all those things can happen for sure you know, you, you see some higher lows building here, and there's some higher lows building. Maybe it cracks these higher lows, gets down to it's at a low sixes. But you know, a lot of the stuff I do is intraday, and I was like, you know, with sector strength and 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 you know, constant. And also, 
the book on this was in, in the morning. There was like 700,000 share bids on this in the morning. It was insane. And it was like 300K ask, 700K bids. It was like insane. The, the book on this was n nuts. So the problem with like a, a really thick book like that is the you get very, you know, low floats go up and down so much because the book is so empty. Like that's why the volatility exists in low floats. It's because in low floats you have, like say you have a $2 stock, there might be like no orders up to 2.2. So it goes up 10% in one candle because there's just no orders on the book. So it just straight up. This has like orders everywhere. So you get this grindy action. And if you're expecting 40% phase, it's, pr you know, it unless the context, you know, like SMCI where like the context really matches up, um, it's probably not going to happen. It's probably not going to happen. So the fade potential on this from an intraday perspective is not great. Um, but maybe from a swing perspective, it's great. You know, if you're, if you're swinging this high day clear out or maybe this push right here and you're expecting weakness going into the close, well, it's a close right now, but going into the after hours or pre-market, like, hey, but, but just understand that's what the trade is, right? Book's too thick. It's probably not going to go straight down 40% of the day. So anyway, sector strength, interesting. Um, you know, I, I, I'm glad that worked out. I just, I just told him, I was like, um, you know, I longed off the one minute 20. I'm hoping the sector strength pushes this. And it did, which I held more for longer. Um, and yeah, that's the video. So, you know, keep an eye on AI. Keep an eye on uh, what's happening. You know, it's not going to, just because, but the last thing I'll say is just because your sector strength doesn't mean that every single day AI is going to have a bid on, you know, where nothing fades, right? Um. I'd love it if I had another strong day tomorrow and then you could get some, you know, the, what's great about sector strength is you get a, you get a couple tickers that are truly strong and then you get a bunch of like, you know, the third, fourth and fifth and sixth tickers that kind of start getting like sympathy sector strength, like kind of like the, 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 the shittier AI names start popping and, and especially in the pre-market and stuff like that. And those can have big fades. So that'd be nice. Anyways, it's the video for today. Information down below about the Discord, and you guys have a good one. See ya.